Hey everybody, Scoop Talk, Hugh Kelmer, inside the hall of Zachary Osterman, Dustin Rapierak, hanging yeah, out in the second row. Chilling. Probably should not have put Dustin in the second row. But I now sit where Dan Dockage sat. And Jim Jackson sat. And Jim Jackson. Here is his Also, travel if you would like to know his travel <laughs> itinerary. <laughs> Jim Jackson's travel itinerary. Also, <laughs> take a screen grab. <laughs> also, third foul on Dustin's favorite player, Philando <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Philando and Orlando. Boys, Indiana wins his third straight game. Uh, somehow that's the first time that's happened under Tom Green. Well, I, I, I know how. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did win yeah. ten games last year, and they won some Patsy games. And mm-hmm. In my head, they had come in a row. Yeah. Well, there was just a loyal game split it up. Yeah. yeah. Some, uh, some, you know, some kind of cupcake games at the end there, but they threw Loyola in the middle, and Loyola kind of screwed it all up. Yeah. Well, they looked like they, they, they should have done it. The end of the non-conference schedule was first year, and then they lost to Northeastern and Lipscomb at home. Yeah, over winter break. Right, so that that's was rough. right. I remember that Northeastern game. That was terrible. Oh, I was there. I stayed. I stayed in in Bloomington until the twenty third instead of going home. So what was great about game. the Northeastern game was how the Northeastern players weren't even excited. <laughs> like they were just like beat Indiana, whatever. Like <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so. So uh, yeah, it, it, Indiana, Indiana wins um, 62-44 final. 67-44. 67-44. No, I was way off. Sorry, I was reading off of that. I, yeah, that I'm, was, I'm, they, uh, the got seven, seventy-one fifty-four. Indi- it was some thousand. score. Indiana wins. <laughs> anyway. Indiana Delta won. Airlines flight sixty-fifty. <laughs> right, right, Columbus right. to Detroit. <laughs> the point was. The point was. It's Indiana won defensively tonight. Was, yeah, was pretty much the, the thing. Uh, Again. I uh, they helped Mississippi Valley State to 34% shooting, and it only got that high because they were 4 of 6 in the last three minutes, uh, yeah. playing mostly against the walk-ons. Up until that point, Mississippi Valley was under 30%. And, uh, you know, that was really the key. I mean, they didn't, you know, Indiana didn't gamble a lot, you know, didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. They forced a lot of turnovers. There was 23 that Mississippi Valley State had, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a lot of, you know, live ball steals, attacking, that sort of thing. They just played really good, solid defense, contested shots. And, uh, wow, um, contested shots basically kept people in front of them, didn't give up the dribble, and they just played a sound defensive game. I mean, they, they look like they're really buying into that. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, it is really a team effort. Like, there's not mm-hmm. a real standout defender. Vic Hall Depot is a good defender. Mm-hmm. Um, Rivers is a good defender. Rivers is a good defender, else, right. Which is um, good. But yeah, right. Which is yeah, it's kind of what Jeremiah Rose needs to be. But yeah. I mean, it's it's really a team effort. There's not a we, a real real weak link, and there's not just like a lockdown. A, a lockdown. There's not a Chris Kramer type, but there's also no. not guys where you just go, we're just gonna blow by you. Well, there was something, and I tried to get Tom to talk about it tonight, and he insulted my word choice. We didn't insult it. Um, he said, he insulted his alma mater. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, Apparently, being a Chippewa. You have to learn how to spell Chippewa, but mitigate not so mitigate, much. Not so much. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, the division of labor. Right they're still here. turning the ball yeah. over a lot. I think tonight was seventeen, mm-hmm. um, including ten in the second half, uh, but only nine points off of those turnovers. Right. It's it, you know, and and what that's doing at the same time, one, it makes the defense look a lot better. Two, the, the points aren't coming in bunches. Right. Whereas the last two years, it seems like Indiana will hang with the team and hang with the team and hang with the team, and then all of a sudden, boom. You know, that's it. You know, mm-hmm. two or three bad possessions, and you get eight points off those possessions, and all of a sudden a three-point lead is an 11-point lead, and the game looks like it's out of hand. And what the, 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 the I don't know what I call it, transition defense, but the defense after turnovers seems to be kind of stopping those turnovers, whatever right. it may be. Tom said tonight that it was it was where you turn the ball over sometimes that matters. Um, yeah, they turn the ball over a lot right under the basket. Yeah. Right. And they also turn the ball over in a lot of situations where – you know, dead a, a dead ball, a charge, you know, an offensive foul, those sort of things. That but they don't give up a lot in a transition. Few, I mean, there, there were a few no, they don't. Where, they don't. They don't. And that's and that's been a real problem for them, just in terms of right. killing momentum and, 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 and just losing kind of any foothold they have in a game. Mm-hmm. And it, it helps that they're playing four guards a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and there's also situations in which you see the turnover happen and immediately it almost happens too much because two guys are instantly flying back. Like mm-hmm. in, in some way, like they know it's going to happen, or they're prepared for it in some weird way. I, you well, know. there's an understanding, obviously, that uh, the offense is not just simply is not that far along. There's kind of an acceptance of that. Yeah. Uh, as as Karina said a bunch of times, it was all about defense and re- rebounding this preseason and just really getting after it and just kind of beating up on each other. 
And uh, a lot of things didn't get done on offense, and, and Kareem pretty much you know, admitted that from, from the beginning that that was going to be the case. That was going to be the way it was. There would be plays still being installed uh, at this point in the year, probably until December, maybe till conference play. Uh, and that's obviously something you could tell. I mean, it's not, it's not that it's not crisp. It's, I mean, they have gotten better each game, I think, uh, offensively in terms of their execution. Tonight they couldn't shoot it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've, they've kind of progressively gotten better. But it's admittedly not there. And they're, they know they've got to rely on their defense and rebounding, and they know there's going to be turnovers, so they got to get back. Yeah, Christian Watford uh, through the three for three regular season games, also two exhibitions, clearly been mm-hmm. uh, the team's best player on offense, maybe on both ends. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right; after that, it's kind of a rotating cast. Rodell Jones had a yeah. really big game Sunday. He was had almost an had an awful night tonight. Seven turnovers, um, five points. Right, Mar- Maurice yeah. Creek and Verdell Jones were combined. Four of 18 Nine, and one of 19, eight. I think. Yeah. I think it might have been nine. No, you might no, be right. 18. Four, four 18, of 18. Two, Creek was two of eight. Jones was two of ten. Ten. Uh, and and Hall Creek was two of six, so combined the Hall right. crew was six for 24. Hall, yeah, Hall's that was. Had a nice night. Right. Holes Hall, had a nice Hall's night. Had a nice um, game. Uh, five assists, a uh, couple of steals. One really, one on turn. Really nice um, assist. Uh, kind of a no look pass to Old Depot. Yeah. Um, and I, I really thought the play he made before then, where he went to go drive and pull up, recognized who was guarding him, and then that pull up was probably not going to be all that effective, and pulled back. And when they followed him out, that mm-hmm. opened up that hole for Oladipo. So that was really yeah. an entire possession right. of good play by Holes that created that highlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another really nice, you know, classic Jordan Holes move where he had Capobianco like wide open underneath, but there was kind of a defender hanging back there. And I think he just made, just kind of deked his head to look at another guy, just just dragged him just a couple more feet off, uh, mm-hmm. so that he could get, he could get yeah. kind of wide open for a layup. And it was kind of that classic Jordan Holes basketball IQ move, uh, you know, you've been seeing since South, and that was, you know, kind right. Of classic him. And Capo Bianco had been open, but Holes was the yeah, guy who saw another, him. He needed another couple feet just to right. make sure that that guy, you know, didn't double back on Capo Bianco and foul him. So he just deked him just in, just enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, to make it an easy pass, and that's the kind of play the last year he would have just thrown that pass, and it would have mm-hmm. it would have looked like a fifty fifty decision. He right. would have thrown it; it would have been knocked out of bounds, maybe picked off. Right. It's it's little stuff like that that that's mm-hmm. hard to quantify in the moment, but you just the plays start to add up, and you kind of start to see this team making plays that they wouldn't have last year. Just little things, like you said, just waving him off by a foot with his eyes, with his head, mm-hmm. and it's an easy layup as opposed to a turnover or even just the ball knocked out of bounds. Yeah, so they're three and zero. They get a little, three games in five days. They manage to survive it. Mm-hmm. Um, manage to survive pretty much intact. Derek Olson had a little bit of a knee injury tonight. Uh, not really sure. It looked like he it may have just look too bad. I saw him no. actually limping around uh, after the game. So okay. I mean, he's not. He's mobile. Right. Yeah. It looked like he may have just banged knees. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have just you know one of those maybe things. Maybe sprain. Maybe this right. like that. But it's probably not a you know it's right. not a Murray's Creek situation. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, they now get a little bit of a break. They don't play again until Sunday. Uh, they'll play Evansville in-state team. Uh, really good sophomore guard in Colt Ryan coming into Assembly Hall, a guy that was AAU teammates with Jordan Holes and Bobby Capobianco. And a lot of people thought maybe should have been gone higher than some place like Evansville, but was the conference freshman of the year last season. So that should be a good test, a good in-state team test uh, for Indiana as it tries to go to 4-0 and – Survive this really gauntlet of a non-conference November get, schedule. It, yeah, it, it doesn't get really tough until December first when they go to Boston College. I yeah. know that's a really, really tough team, but you know it's an ACC school, and that's those are the type of teams they got to measure themselves by. And, right. Uh, you know they're obviously going to have a new coach, and, Steve Donahue, taking over. But then after that is, is Kentucky, and then you know a couple right. of games after that is Vegas, and then next year is conference play. But, and Boston College has two uh, strength is inside. Yeah. They're. Right. They have two big guys who are really their players. So that would be an interesting test for Indiana because up until now they haven't played anybody. They maybe, had real big maybe. guys that allowed them, yeah. allowed Indiana to play four guards and try to run and create right. a bunch of things on the defensive end. They need key back. They need key back. back. They really need key back. We just let's just announce that if we we find out something about key, we'll tell you. We'll tell you. We'll we're not we're not Perhaps we're not people that keep it a secret. Rick Pizzo could tell you. Rick Piso could carry He's Gee Mark up the it. stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Piso, we have seen, much we we have seen Rick Piso <laughs> lift weights. It's kind of scary. Kind of scary. <laughs> I think Rick Piso. He carried the point guards. He's using performance enhancing hair gel. 
I'm going to get in real trouble for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Ten Network That's Mafia is going to destroy you. <laughs> that didn't happen. I swear to God, Rotel, that did not happen.